Yes, people, welcome back to the Rat Cave. It's Ratsy here, and I'm joined once again by my man, Sammy. <laughs> mate, always nice to have you in, mate. Always a pleasure. Yeah, right, so the reason why I brought Sammy back here, since the brand new Pioneer XDJXZ has dropped, a lot of people have been asking, obviously it is a standalone controller, right? It is the big boy flagship, standalone, two channel standalone, where you've got a USB in here, four channel when you've got the extra decks in everything like that. We, that's not what this video is about today. The reason why uh, I've got you in here, Sammy, is we have had loads of people asking, when you're using this in as a DJ controller rather yep. than like standalone mode, yep. um, you know, why, why get this when the DDJ1000 is out? Yes. So obviously the 1000, you know, regular watchers of this channel will know that the 1000 is my baby. I, I, it's the one. It, it's I've, the flagship controller. I've got it. Um, I've, I used it. Uh, I, I, I reviewed it and I kept it. That's, <laughs> that's, that's how it went down, right? But so, yeah, basically I wanted to compare the, the 1000, which by the way, this is the original DDJ 1000, not the Serato one. The XZ, you can use this with Serato and Rekordbox. We're comparing them in Rekordbox mode today. Yeah, we've got it in Rekordbox mode. But just to highlight in general, that is um, just a general key feature about a controller mode is the fact that if you are a user that likes Rekordbox, sometimes uses Serato, or you own a business where people come in and DJ and DJ off Rekordbox and Serato, even so, this top conversation is key because you would probably go for this unit over this because you'd have to buy of course this the is srt version if you wanted to use it for serato users. and this doesn't have a standalone function the 1000 you can't just plug a usb in and play it like that so this hits like all four corners the but xz does yeah but what i wanted to do is is yeah compare this when you're using it in, in record, record box, box mode yeah um to the 1000 the original 1000 record box not you know like a head-to-head -head comparison Kind of just to just to see which features is on the XZ yes. and not on the on, on the one thousand. Yeah. What's on the one thousand? What's not on the XZ? Um, and what they both have as well together. So, um, yeah, let's let's get into that. Should we cool. Might? Should we dive straight into the mixer then? Yeah. Um, and cool. talk about that because like, obviously the first thing that you guys can all see on camera is kind of this mixer is jam packed with loads of goodies Lo loads of really cool features um and this one is also jam-packed but it's it's a lot more spacious um and this reminds me a lot more well it is the same as our 900 nexus 2 when we're looking at yeah. features like how this bit's laid out let's let's actually first look at the beat effects because okay, yeah. there are some kind of big differences especially in size this takes up the whole right hand side of the mixer yeah where this is like a small portion of it just down here yeah so just to mention if anyone's wondering about the amount of beat effects um this has 14 and this has 14 but they there are different effects so these are the same effects that you'll find on the 900 nexus 2 the exact same the exact beat same effects, beat yeah. effects on yeah. there whereas um that's almost like a mix between our djm ranges with some added extras which is your low cut echo enigma jet and mobius saw and mobius triangle yeah so this uh doesn't have those four effects it on doesn't it. have them four effects so, no so 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 different effects that's that's the first kind of difference yeah in so if people section. like it like those features then they have to to kind of go something for the 1000 to get those on the beat effects yeah jumping down from that you've got your switchboard here to go across to either your crossfader your mics your orcs obviously we're talking about controller so it wouldn't be the orcs we're looking at channel three two one and four yeah. and then your master yeah which uh on the 1000 you've obviously got you know the the same uh channels here um one to four then you've got effects on the mic uh, effects on the sampler, which we'll get onto yeah, yeah. in in a bit, and then effects all of the effects onto the master. But as well, like obviously you went down there, but going up, the big difference here is that this has got the X pad um, yes. on it, whereas the one thousand doesn't. Um, the one thousand does have this this little screen here, which uh, which you don't have on this XR, 
um, but obviously you've got that big whopper screen there. Yeah, so, that so, so really it makes up for it. Is if you can see in here, as I switch them over, as you can see it changing up there. So that's all. that little screen within the screen of the XZ is like looking at this one here. Um, a difference is on the beat effects, what you don't get on the 1000 is you've got your low, mid and your high yeah. for your beat effects. And so you can EQ the effects. Almost on, like on EQ, XR. like little bits out. And that's really good, especially like I've done it quite a lot where I do like a bit of, of delay uh, and I only do it on the low and when I do a wheel back it just has a delay on the low whereas on this I can't kind of do that function but it all depends on your mixing and how far you go into your beat effects yeah but that's definitely a benefit from this side is you get you almost like your free band frequency low mids and high on your beat effects yeah and then also here you've got um you know your, your auto tap and your and your quantize here as well you don't have this on the 1000 it's a secondary option on here so you've got your oh, auto of course and it your is. tap Un underneath the, yeah. the, the the beat buttons here but then the thing is i would say that this is more for standalone mode yeah. because you would hope that using this in record box obviously it goes um it it is the same. It quantizes to what's happening within the program. To, to, yeah. to your beat grids. So as long as your beat grids are right, that's this why we have. That's right. why we have the quantize on this one. Yeah. For when you're using it in standalone mode, it can quantize your beat effects to whatever tracks you're playing. Now I'm going to move slightly over to the left and look at our different types of knobs that we got. I know that's quite quite a random thing <laughs> <laughs> to say and yeah. to look at. Well, um, no, but, but you, can, you a, can tell the difference. Yeah, actually. like yeah, yeah. It's more like you got like the 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 white kind of trims around the bottom of the pots. Yeah, um, and then when you're looking at your sound color effects. This is actually slightly bigger than the one on the 1000. And obviously it's silver. But then and this silver, is, yes. I mean, you know, I think we're going to keep saying it, but... This it's 900 is, Nexus this is 2 900 features. 900 Nexus 2, that's, that's what that looks like. Yeah, when Whereas you're looking at features, that's what you've got on this one. And over there, this, it's, um, this is a little more understated. Oh, you could say <laughs> that. You could say that. <laughs> I would say, but yeah. Um, but what, what, what I think it is, is the reason why we've done this, like I said about the space at the beginning. So this... There's a lot more extra space on this because of the size of this unit. And yeah, so actually, sorry to interrupt you, mate. You did say, like, when, you know, you said the first thing um, is that, that you noticed about the difference is the effects, like, mi the, the mixer section. I would say the first thing that you notice about this is actual the physical size. Yeah, like, yeah, the XR yeah. is, I mean, obviously on this, on this uh, camera here, you know, we, I, I haven't got enough space in the rat cave here to, to get both of the controllers fully But maybe in, one so day. Just, maybe one day. Yeah, maybe one day. But... Yeah, the the one thousand is quite a bit smaller. Um, in it's basically if you width, if you depth. cut off this bit here, uh, that's the one thousand on the top, and this extra add-on that we got for definitely the standalone feature um, is the extra added space. But then going back to the layout of the two mixers, and I said this one's a lot more jam-packed with different things. That's because within the mixing section of this, we've got your two mics with the two-band EQ, whereas the mics aren't on the mixer on here. They're located within the top left-hand corner. Yeah, so, so we've taken away that little bit of space. So that's why this looks jam-packed. But it also has... But, I mean, you know, just going going back to the size, you know, it's obviously because all of this is up here, whereas this doesn't have it. And then you don't you've have got that the screen the yeah. in, in the middle of that one. So, but yeah, it is, it, you know, it, it's... The 1000 is more... It is a lot smaller. Um, and it weighs a lot less. Yeah, so if you're on the road and stuff, this is, this. and when you're talking about, we're talking about here, remember guys, the four channel controller mode. Yeah. And we're comparing it four channel controller mode. And if we're looking at it from that angle and you're 100% controller DJ, um, the 1000 is definitely the way you would go. I really had fun with this mixer. And when I jumped onto this one, I felt like I was just DJing at home or when I DJ in a club on the 900 Nexus 2. Yeah. With the spacing, um, how it's all laid out, these pots being silver, yeah. you get that exact same feel. Yeah. But that's the kind and of like you've got this little white trim just un underneath, un yeah, underneath, and uh, and and that's that's missing from there. Little touches that makes this look exactly like you said, like a nine hundred Nexus two mixer. Whereas this doesn't really look. I mean, it's unique to it. Like for me, like we can't. We can compare this mixer to a lot of our mixers, but this is just unique in general, like yeah. how it's laid out. Um, the, for example, we're going to move on slightly, but you've got this pot on here, which is a sample volume. You haven't got that on here. Um, and that's another feature that if you are using it in controller mode, you are going to miss the sampler from this, from this unit yeah, that so, you'd have on this one. So the XZ 
even in controller mode when you're using it with Rekordbox or Serato, doesn't have a sampler. So mate, one actual big difference um, for me, which I picked out was that the 1000 has got the Magvel fader on it, which is f for me- For the scratch. Uh, yeah. Scratch I, I, DJs. I, I, I like to do a little bit of scratching myself. Um, you know, you've got, got that really nice fader in there. This, I mean, it's, it's not a mag fader on this XZ. Um, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. It's still, you know, you, you, you can still scratch on that fader. Yeah, and, and in the utility settings, um, you can still change the curve of your fader. Of course, um, to, to like a real tight cut and everything. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, you've got that Magvel fader on this 1000. So in my opinion, that's, that's an extra check for, uh, for, yeah. for this 1000 compared to the XZ. Um, you know, so quite, quite a big difference there really with, with, with the mag in that, but not, not the mag in the XZ. But also, you know, the final thing as well on, on the mixer section, let's just try and wrap it up here, is, you know, you can, you, you can see that there's six sound color effects compared to the four. Yeah, and you've also got your parameter pot here to adapt those even more. And that's a really nice feature that I use quite a lot. And when I use this, sometimes I feel like I want to go for this parameter knob, but it's not on there. But this is still great because you've got your key ones on there. You've got filter, noise, Dub echo and pitch. Yeah, yeah, and 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 they're all on there anyway, aren't they? You got filter. Oh no, filter noise, dub echo, crush. So sweep and space. So no pitch on this one. No. No. Okay. So it's actually different sound color effects, and you've got two extra. Jumping over to our deck side, the main thing we're both going to see and notice is the full size jog wheel. Yeah, they're they're both exactly the same size, and yeah. they're both the exact same jog wheels from the CDJ. Um, 2000 Nexus. Yeah. In that they're they're ball bearings in them. Yeah. Um, and yeah. They and then we're going to go over to the on jog display. Yeah. And yeah. you've got the same on jog displays on the X edge. You can change this information to have full artwork, which is quite nice as well. Yeah. But in general, you're looking at the same jog wheel, so that's a plus for both of them, I would say, because that was a feature that a lot of people liked and. Having it on this is key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it is nice. What I would say, I don't think that this will come up very strongly on on the camera, but I mean, I don't know if maybe the XZ has got a better high quality yeah, screen. Yeah, so I it. think it that's what kind of a bit more high def than it does. So you can see on the waveform, this is like come from something like our DJ eight hundred, where you can change your your screen to have full waveform because of the quality of the screen. Yeah. And um, this one, even e even well. looking at that waveform there, uh, the colors and stuff, they're a lot more vibrant, but this is still really great. This still has like loads of information and you have your scope at the bottom here, which you don't have on this one. Mm -hmm. But the same, if you go into slip mode, this turns into red. So just quite nice little features on the jog wheel. Moving away from that, you've then got your cues up the top yeah, with, your loop, with your loop in section. That, that's, that's in the same place. That's in the same place, but this one here is probably more for like your standalone feature. But in controller mode, it still works. As you can see here, uh, going through my different cue points on the track, very easy. On this one, how you would do it is you would hold shift and then use the search button down here to go through your different cue points. Yeah, so so a little difference there up there. So and, this and is more like kind of CDJ here. style, club Absolutely. standard that's, CDJ that's style. That's where they are on the CDJs, the, right? That's yeah. where they are on the CDJs. Yeah. So that's how you're gonna feel at home. And then like, if you're using this controller, it's in a different location. So if you know you're 100% always just gonna be playing on a controller and you do use your cue calls, this is a cool function to have. It doesn't mean, it, just because it's up here, it doesn't mean that you're gonna get confused. Mm. Uh, I think if you use controllers all the time, that's, that's not gonna be an issue for you. Moving down from that, obviously you've got your jog adjust, which is key yep. to adjust the tension of the jog wheel. Yeah, we've got jog adjust on the 1000 as well. And then we've got your sync and master, again in the same place you're gonna find it on a CDJ, yep. where this is embedded with a little button just there. Yep, yep, you've got the, um, uh, the, the, the beat sync there, and then you have to hold shift to, for, for the master. Yep. Um, whereas this has got the two, which is on the CDJ. Um, same size pitch fader. Yep, same size pitch fader, but little, little differences here. Um, you've got your master tempo and your tempo range and your key sync and your key reset uh, down here. Whereas, you know, you've got tempo reset here, um, but no key reset. And how you do that actually is um, when we go onto the pads, there's ways of doing these pads so you can, they double up um, and you can use keyboard and key shift mode. And if you are out of key and you want to go back, then all you do is hold shift and master tempo and 
that's exactly saying that's exactly the same as the key reset button okay yeah cool. so it is in there it's just you have to work out and find out where it is but this yeah. one has the physical buttons on there yeah but i mean this again is just that's it's a, it's that's, a cdj that's, that's what you get on a cdj yeah, yeah, whereas the CD master J. tempo here which you know, makes it this unique to being a controller these so guys as we're kind of going through this hopefully you can see that if you do like using controllers and a laptop all the shortcuts and everything are embedded within the controller yeah. at the touch of a button where this one's a bit more difficult to find is sometimes within the program is still there but this is more kind of for your this is very much laid out as a cdj and a mixer in a standalone setup this is us just talking about it in a four channel mode yeah so if you are thinking of the controller route this is probably weighing up as like your your best option because of all the kind of key features that has that has on the unit yeah so I mean, one of the real big differences here, I think probably the biggest difference, because even the, everything that we've said is, you know, even though there are only six here, you've still got four. Yeah, or yeah, Or even yeah. though this is here, what? But something that the 1000 does have, but the XZ doesn't, is a sampler. Staying on to this area, actually, we're actually looking at these pad modes. So when you connect the DDJ-1000 to Rekordbox, you get something come up in the right-hand corner called Pad Editor, yeah. which allows you to go in there and completely change these pads. When you're using the XZ with Rekordbox, the Pad Editor doesn't come up. You can still slightly change the pads, but for example, these are set. So you've got Hot Cue here, Beat Loop, and then when you're in Controller mode, Slip Loop automatically changes to your pad effects okay which is a, a, a cool feature because especially when you are using this with a laptop a lot of people like to use some of the effects that are built into yeah, yeah, yeah. record box so that's cool that it changes that for you and then beat jump stays as beat jump and then even though the secondary options aren't on here if you hold shift and then press hot cue this now jumps into keyboard mode and then the next one is key shift this is pad effects 2 now and then the last one like i said always stays at beat jump so these first three change as secondary options yeah but but the beat jump always stays the same yeah um obviously on the 1000 you've got hot cue pad effects one beat jump uh then you've got that sampler on on the end the secondary is a keyboard pad effects two beat loop and key shift so yeah so you still got like a lot of people like the whole keyboard mode so yeah remember always guys the first one is going to be your keyboard and then your second one acts as your key shift so just a little bit of like you know last last minute bits like the Q and the play buttons are exactly the same size yeah little bit more space between them and the pads here um the pads uh they're, they're the same size right as well on on both of these controllers yeah you just got the the black imprint there in the middle where these are just flash white yeah so so these are all one block color whereas the color goes around the outside yeah on, yeah on them but but they are the same size color pads um yeah you know we 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 sort of mentioned about about the jog wheels they're all the same you've got that same light around the outside of the jog wheel there this has got the silver outside from the srt from the srt um yeah. you know it's because you can use this with serato as well as record box which yeah. is a huge huge thumbs up uh, on on the XZ um, and uh, yeah, I mean, apart from the obvious difference of the actual size of both of the units, you know, obviously this has got the screen in the middle for when you're using it in standalone mode. But even when you are using it in record box yeah. or um, mode, you've got so, so that you don't really need to be looking at your laptop. You've got your waveforms and everything. That's on. A, that's another great thing that you've mentioned there, Ratsy. That yeah, when you are using this with a laptop this screen still comes into play so everything you see here is just coming straight from the laptop when i go back and i'm scrolling through my music this is now scrolling on my laptop as well yeah and a lot of people have asked i've seen in different comments they've said there's no so on here you've got your deck select for two and four yeah deck that's select. that's not on the deck side here this is now embedded within the shortcut and then as you can see here this is how i switch over my deck so on this side at the minute, I'm on deck four, and if I press that, I've now jumped back onto yeah. the second deck. Whereas here, three and one, you just press it like that. So that's three, that's one. Um, you know, so button, whereas that, you go into the screen. Um, so I think mainly to conclude, actually, is like, if you're a DJ that 
is unsure whether you want to go controller or standalone record box serato the xz is definitely the unit for you yeah yeah of course and you know because you can use it on serato record box or standalone yeah, you it's can got hit the option all four corners, of, of all three where if you 100 percent know that you only want to use a laptop only want to use record box only want to use record box the 1000 the ddj 1000 is the one for yeah. you and well then uh, obviously if you only want it, if you're only using serato the, the 1000 srt the srt yeah um yeah uh but because there is no standalone function on this uh, DDJ 1000 apart from like we mentioned before the mixer itself is standalone yeah. so if you if you've got vinyl turntables plugged in or CDJs you don't need a laptop plugged in you can use this mixer to to manipulate the external um, equipment plugged in that's correct that's correct right also just before we wrap it up here I just want to say one one last little uh, thumbs up for my for, for my baby the DDJ 1000 <laughs> It's got two USB inputs on the back of the 1000. So you can have two laptops going from this at, at the same time. Yeah, um, yeah. You share know, half the mixer each or, on, on a different laptop. Or, or, or your changeover is going to be easy smooth. Switchovers. Yeah. Whereas the XZ only has one USB out of the back. Yeah, so that's only one laptop. But how I'd bridge what you were just saying there. So how I would change over is uh, my second kind of laptop to say it would be my usb mm -hmm. so that's how i would switch between different djs with my usb inputs but again like you said if it's to do with a laptop this has two a and b so this is probably the one to go for if you're a mobile dj and you've got two laptops on the go well if you've got two laptops on the go but the thing is and like this is going to be the kind of conclusion here really is the ddj 1000 is built to use with a laptop. Yes. That's why it's got all these laptop features on it, like two laptop inputs. All, all the shortcuts. So another thing we haven't mentioned here, you've got a shortcut for your palettes, a shortcut for your related tracks. Yeah. These are all at a touch of a button. Yeah. This, these features are a bit different. We're bedded within this unit, within like the track filter mode and different things like that. But yeah. this works solidly with Rekordbox DJ. Yeah, the I buttons. mean, as, as does the XZ. As does the XZ. But obviously the XZ as well is you know, you've got that absolute Brucey bonus of using it standalone mode. Yeah, and having the screen on it, which ha is what you don't get on this yeah, one here. Yeah, exactly. So to conclude, if you are completely set on using a laptop, you don't need standalone mode, you know, the DDJ 1000 is... Is the one. It, it, I mean, the XZ can be the one for you as well. They can both be the one. Like, it, it all depends you individually. Like, this comes down to size. It comes down to pricing. It yeah. comes down to where you want to go in but the future. there's not that much of a difference in price as you would think to pay a little bit extra. I mean, I think at the point where this video is being shot, it's about 400, 500 sterling pounds-ish to get the XZ compared to the 1,000. And you are buying that... USB standalone feature. Yeah. And I mean, realistically, it's not that much of a difference in my opinion, but you know, whatever, if, if you're set in your ways, DJing with a laptop, whether it be Serato, you get the 1000 SRT. Record box, you get the original 1000. If you want the option of Serato record box and standalone, all in one unit, you get the XZ. Mate, I think Do you, we agree? I think you just nailed it in a short summary. We agree, <laughs> God damn it. Right, listen, Sammy, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. It's been an thank absolute you so pleasure. Thank for swinging by. Um, guys, if this has been helpful, like, share, tag people in it. Any questions in the comments as well. What I'm going to do um, in the comments, uh, in the description of this video, sorry, I will put in our um, overview video of the XZ yep, yep. and the overview video of the 1000. And also we actually did a comparison of the 1000 versus the 1000 SRT. Yeah. So all of that in the description, guys, if you want to know more about both the units. But uh, yeah, as always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Peace.